you know, some people say that electric cars are a bit boring. Some of them are, but not when they do 0 to 60 in 1.85 seconds. And not when uh, the top speed is over 250 miles an hour. And not when they go from 0 to 300 kmh in 11 seconds. Welcome to Fully Charged. This is a Geneva Motor Show, and I am looking at the latest offering from Rimac. It is the C2. A phenomenal piece of engineering. Oh look, it's, uh, it's over 1900 horsepower. <laughs> Bloody hell. This is probably the most exciting thing for Fully Charged at the Geneva Show. I have Mate here from Rimac. Pleased to meet you, finally. Yeah, finally. We spoke on an email a lot and uh, that kind of thing. This creation of yours is something else, the C2. It's for a small company that no one really knew about at that time from Croatia. The quality of the execution was fantastic. You know, you're not a big company. Well, you're bigger than you were in 2011. Well, we were then like less than 10 and we are now 350. I mean, look, we can't ignore it. It's spinning around behind us. Yeah. Um, I was there when you unveiled it and you did an amazing chat and I've taken some notes because there's a mind boggling amount of information. Some of it's scrolling on this screen behind us. But so the, the C2, 1900 horsepower. 1.4 megawatts for you. 1.4 megawatts. Are you listening to this? OK. For a few seconds. The Concept 1 was 1200 horsepower, which is insane. This is the most powerful car in this room by some margin. I guess, yeah. I think you I, I mean, even Koenigsegg standards. Yeah. Yeah? And Koenigsegg, you, 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 you supply the high voltage systems for Koenigsegg, and I, I liken this car to Koenigsegg because... The Christian I, was just sitting in it. Was he? Yeah, you know, it's like a dream come true, you know. When I started, I wanted to do what, you know, my big hero Christian was doing. Yeah. And now, you know, we are like buddies, he comes into my Well, you're car. like the high voltage Christian Koenigsegg, <laughs> basically, because what I like about the Koenigsegg is they're a very tastefully design car they're not too fussy it's it's about the functionality and it, it's the same thing here so everything you see here has a true purpose and that's you know we don't want to fake things yeah. so everything in this car was not just here for a purpose but actually uh, simulated and designed through many many iterations so yeah. like for this air intake there are like m months and months of work and thousands of hours of simulation in supercomputers to get that exact shape just just a story like so the rear powertrain is cooled separately here, with the yep. front powertrain separate uh, cooling in the front. Yep. But the rear powertrain has more um, heat rejection because it's more power in the rear. Okay. But the front powertrain is in the wind. So okay. uh, it's really difficult to get enough air in here. And the engineers want the hole here to get more air in yep. and a little scoop. And the designers say, no way. <laughs> so we are fighting and working on it for months to make this air intake work, but not just here. It's the whole car, how to direct the air through the bottom of the car, through the side yeah. to get the air in here. So a little detail, and there are like thousands of those on around the car. I, I was going to say, you've got, I mean, you've got eye, eye rec facial recognition. Face recognition, so you don't need a key. You approach the car, it unlocks and recognizes you. Oh my goodness. So if you have a hangover and your face looks a bit different. You shouldn't drive when you have a hangover. It's true, absolutely yeah. true. But That's the car exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> um, the doors, I mean, they're a really big part of this car, physically, literally, because they take in uh, part of the roof, like yeah. the Ford GT yeah. 40, uh, and then a part of the sill. You know, we didn't want to make something like, let's say, a Mercedes Project One or a, uh, Aston Martin Volkari. We wanted to have not such an extreme car, more yeah. like a GT, which is usable. So one of the goals was that you can uh, sit in the seat and get your foot out without lifting your bottom to the sill. Yeah, yeah. And not, you know, go climb into the car, but actually make it very nice to enter. This is a full carbon fiber. Top. Full carbon fiber top with integrated structural battery. So the battery is a structural part, very important structural part to the to the monocoque. Yeah. And then um, what usually cars have a steel or aluminum rear frame. Yeah. Some cars like the Bugatti, like the Porsche 918 have also carbon fiber rear subframe. Yeah. Here we have a carbon fiber subframe, but it's not a separate part. It's part of the monocoque. And then we have front and rear aluminum crash structures. Can you make all your carbon in house, don't you? I've and the tools and the carbon fiber parts, it's all done. It's like, amazing. We are probably 
what I know, the most vertically integrated company in the industry. Designing, the, everything is designed by us and developed. Yeah. And then also most of it produced, and not just produced, but also the tools and so on produced. Yeah, for yeah. You were saying also that um, this has uh, some options for the kind of luggage compartment. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've made this into a sort of race car for exhibition purposes. I love the, the joke. In Don't case, take yourself too seriously, In case right? of hell climb, use fire extinguisher. Yeah. Uh, Richard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hammond in the uh, the Grand Tour episode. Richard, if you're watching, don't be mad. <laughs> what do you mean, don't be mad? He trashed your car. You should be mad at him. Oh. <laughs> um, there's a lot of uh, technology going on here, isn't there? Let, let's first talk about the propulsion. So, uh, how many electric motors? If you are talking about the propulsion, should we go to the powertrain? It's yeah. right there. Yeah, okay. So let's go. All so, right. it's uh, four electric motors independent. Um, we have 1.4 megawatts, so in the rear we have one megawatt. Each and motor is 500 kilowatts. And the front motors, each one is 200 kilowatts. So oh. it's a 720 volt battery pack with 120 kilowatt hours. 720 volt? Yes, yeah, 720 volt. Whoa. So here on each side we have a 500 kilowatt motor yeah. with a two-speed double clutch gear gearbox uh, for each motor independently, just in the same housing. Yeah. Um, so a 1000 amp inverter on each side. Whoa. This is a so everything is developed specifically for this wow. car. The power distribution unit, battery pack with liquid cooling, and then the front motors, which have a single speed gearbox uh, and 200 kilowatts each. So the shape of the battery is actually dictated by, by the um, so by, by several things. But for example, we don't have a battery here because we want the seat low, because right. otherwise, like this is the minimum height of a battery pack which uses 21700. Uh, Format cells. This I was going to ask you, is it 2000, was it 21700? Yeah, it's 8600 something cells. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of cells. Yeah, and this is the minimum height of the pack. Yeah. So if you have that under the seat, it moves your H point up for that amount. Yeah. And the roof goes up, so it's not a supercar, hypercar shape anymore. Yeah, this is, a, I can tell the detail on this car is obsessive. Yes, you know, you, you have lived shape. and you've slept and you've not just me, a lot of a lot of other people. I mean, it is impressive, guys. But so the, the exact shape here is the result of, of thousands of simulations. So, for example, why we have part of the batteries here is to have some um, weight distribution more in the front when we accelerate, that the front wheels have enough traction to get the power down, just enough to get the torque. 100% used of the front motors, so, so there is just light. enough batteries. If the front was too light, it would just lift and, yeah, yeah. and spin. Yeah. So the, this car is going to be limited to 150 units. We're only going to sell 150 of these cars. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a price on this car at the moment? Yes, 1.7 million. 1. Euros. Euros. Yeah. 1.7 million euros, which is about 15 million pounds at the moment, I think, something like that. It's quite a lot of money. Depending on Brexit. Depending on Brexit, sadly. Um, but, um, and the also, the, the idea that you can take it to a racetrack and you're saying that they, it has racetrack um, GPS data. Driver coach, so. Loaded um, into the car. Yeah, so you can load some racetracks and the car can drive you like two very fast laps on its own, show you where the braking point is, the turning point, the acceleration point and so on. So it's, it's, a, it's a tutor, it's an autonomous yes. tutor. It's like, a, it's like a professional race coach that you have on your side. We got a LiDAR, you got how, many li uh, how much LiDAR? One LiDAR, uh, eight cameras, uh, six ultrasonic, six radars and 12 ultrasonic sensors. Oh, crikey. And 72 ECUs and processors. Well under two seconds to 62, top speed of, so to 60. Top speed? Uh, 412 kilometers, 258 miles. 258 miles an hour? Yeah. <clears throat> well, the challenge there is the tires. We are still working with Pirelli on the load index. So the difficult thing uh, is with heavy cars because you are reaching the load index limit of the tires very soon. Yeah, and yeah. Then you have to use the active um, aerodynamic to reduce the downforce and so on. Yeah. So it's a tricky thing. We are still working on that to achieve that. The car can do much more. But it's much made, more. Much more. Well, we have the power to go uh, much, much more. Like, I don't know how much. We didn't. We didn't. So we're, we're talking Koenigsegg levels of speed. Well, it has to 1,900 horsepower. You can go. And you've got the air, uh, and this acts as an air brake as well as yeah. as well as downforce. Yeah. And I try to make a car that I would really like to have. Yeah. So not just it's not just about the numbers. In my opinion, it's a little bit too much about the numbers now. But because that's the market, everybody is going to look at the zero to 60 numbers. Yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't want it that way. Yeah. And the customer doesn't get much benefit from 1.85 to versus 
2.2 or something? Yeah, yeah, or 250 miles an hour plus. But it may, we had to do compromises to get there. But, you know, the market is going in that direction. People look at those numbers. In reality... It's a halo for your yeah. capability. Yeah. What's the range of this car? So in NEDC cycle, the new European driving cycle, it's 650 kilometers. Wow. I really think that regardless of the propulsion of this car, even if this was a piston car, I think to look at, the execution is just gorgeous. Yeah, that's really important for us, all the details. It's not just about the big numbers, but every detail counts. Like, we didn't want just to have everything on a touch screen or something like that. The real important driving dynamic functions are here. So here you can choose the front and rear powertrain power ratio. Here you can choose uh, which mode you have. So driver coach is the track uh, self-driving mode. Yeah. You can have race and drift and so on. Yeah. Uh, stability levels, all the important things for driving are so here. So this is rear wheel bias. You, can, you were saying you, it can be a... You can turn off the, the front powertrain and so, so on. So you can just have pure rear? Yeah. My goodness, this is going to be an absolute... Or, or pure front. And you can do that also on the Concept 1. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we have autonomous driving features. So here, for example, uh, so we have um, here, if you go here for pedestrian detection, for example, so here now it knows where, where the people stand. Or here's a demo mode of um, how the car sees its surroundings. Yeah. So this software is done by ourselves. Um, or then you can have uh, like training sessions and see, like here, for example, uh, you can do an acceleration and see how fast you went from zero to 100 kilometers per hour and see the videos that you recorded yeah. while doing this kind of stuff and sharing it then on Facebook and so on. So some interesting things uh, with that. We've got good taste, you know. We didn't want, so we, we really want to make everything that the form follows functions. So no flashy, unnecessary details. Yeah. Um, so everything really has, has a function that has been towed through. So no no kitsch. I don't want kitsch. I don't want it to be screaming like, look at me. Yeah. It's more of a functional, technical, timeless design. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, it's, I'm really not often lost for words, to be honest, but <laughs> I am very, and, and, and then listening to the, the launch of it, when you were talking through all the, the features, there was just so much going on. Yeah, a lot going on, yeah. I, 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 I gotta say, I, I mean, I know Robert has met you before and uh, on fully charged, and it, this is a big, this is a, a proper fully charged Halo project, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I can't wait to come and visit you guys again. I've and have a drive. Well, I would love to have a drive, of course. You, you are at least the guy who knows how to uh, keep a leash on a car like this. I've on, on a fast I've, like driv I've driven some pretty fast EVs. Yeah. I mean, this will be another level, I know. But, well, I started the same thing, uh, the same way you did. I built an old car into an electric car in my garage. Yeah. Ten years ago. Uh, look how what, look at what you've done a decade later. Bloody hell. And 350 other people in the company. Yeah. Not just me. It's good, like you said. I know you're very also you're very passionate about making sure that you, you've put kind of Croatia on the map for uh, different reasons. Yeah, I wanted know. to create also the jobs in Croatia and yeah. to show that it's possible even. In a country, you know, like Croatia is traditionally a country where people go emigrate from. Yeah. They go to UK, Switzerland, whatever. Yeah. And we have managed to attract 22 nationalities to work in our company. Have you? And, yeah, and like, you know, supplying components, high tech components to all of the industry. Yep. yep. So, really, if you can do it there, you can do it in lots I mean, of different places. You, you have, you've, you've definitely proved it. And Croatia is beautiful. I've been there a few times. Yeah, but not for business. <laughs> no, I've been there on holiday and I have a tortoise from Croatia. Uh, which is a slow creature compared to <laughs> a, a C2, which is a fast creature. Thank you. Thank you. Hope I really you appreciate it. your time because I know you're flat out busy today. You're getting mobbed. car of the show for me. I think it's it's deservedly fully charged car of the show. What a piece of engineering. 
you've got to have flagship projects like this. You've got to, this is sort of the halo world. Of, this is EV hypercar world. This is your halo, your calling card. And obviously a lot of this will trickle down. Rimac have proved that they can do this sort of thing and that's why they work with Koenigsegg and other brands and putting high voltage hardened software into uh, other cars is great. It's good news, real success story. You know, this doesn't happen every, every day, every month or even every year. A car that comes out that's pure electric, it's over 250 miles an hour, it's nearly 2,000 horsepower, well under two seconds to 60. And it's not just those stats that make it special, it's the fact that this is not a car that's been developed by a huge company. It's a guy who's completely obsessive, who lives in Croatia and he's assembled this amazing team. And uh, if there was ever a car that was going to attract your attention to the world of electric cars, yes, Tesla, and yes, Jaguar, but Rimac, what a halo for a zero emission car. What a halo. Look at the damn thing.